Hey guys, we're back in the garage again, continuing on the 911 engine build. And today we're gonna put the cam covers on and some other accessories, and we are almost done with this thing. One thing that we're gonna do before we jump into this though, to make this video complete, is we noticed that there was a hole here and we were like, what the heck is this? It turns out we're missing a freeze plug, which would be super bad. Uh, obviously it would have been easier to install that before we put the head on it, but we believe LN removed this one while they were machining the block and cleaning it or doing whatever else it is that they need to do. Uh, and one other note, um, my other buddy Aaron uh, was doing an engine that came back from LN and I can't show you, I'll show you in a picture here, but under this, like right here and right here, or maybe it's right here and right here, and two of these corners are these really big giant freeze plugs, or actually I guess they're not technically freeze plugs, I think somebody said they were called machining plugs or something. They're big openings to allow them to be uh, machined in the manufacturing process. And afterwards, they need to use a big plug to cover it up. Anyway, LN removed one of those on his. He couldn't get any pressure when he was trying to pressurize the cooling system, and it took him a long time to figure out that that was why. So, just in a precautionary note, make sure that if LN does your block, those are installed. So we're just going back to our good old red RTV, spread that on here, and then we're gonna to try to figure out how to hammer it in with no clearance. So, that's where it goes. <laughs> so convenient. Yeah, this is gonna suck. All right, we got one of these little spreader guys like you use to spread brake pads, thinking maybe that might work. After much engineering prowess, this is the device that we came up with that should fit right in the middle and up against the top. And we should be able to uh, start threading it and use that force to press the freeze plug in. At least that's what we that's think. That's a theory. Perfect tight fit and I ratchet it open. Top needs to come back towards you a little bit to keep it completely vertical. There you go. Yes, that's better. All right. We seem to have gotten that on about as well as we can for right now. So hopefully that holds. Okay, back to putting on the cam covers. So we got two cam covers. They are identical, except of course they have the part number that only fits on a certain bank because the journals on the back are machined to go with the head. So they have to go on the right way. We've got some of these that are gonna be going over where the spark plugs go. We're gonna put, install new spark plugs. We have these caps and these big brown caps that you'll see we're gonna put those on. And then we need a sealant. There is a Porsche one. There's a part number for it. Um, we don't have that one. We're going to use this Renzasil by Victor Ryan, Renz, Ryan's, whatever, Ryan's probably. Uh, so this is what we're going to use. Let us know in the comments what you guys use. Um, but uh, yeah, that's what we're going for and uh, we'll get started here. All right, we're also getting these solenoid guys. Um, they have a little O, this one has an O-ring that we're gonna replace. This one has two O-rings that we're gonna replace. And these things are what uh, make your Vario cam work, I guess. So the oil comes through these passages and helps activate the cams and the lifters to make them do their fancy little things. Uh, and this one's got a little notch in it. You can see right here to help get it aligned. So there are two different ones for each bank, but on each bank they are the same. All right, and these are the pieces that uh, you bolt down to hold them into the camshaft cover. And you can see one goes here, one goes here. They fit right on there. They also have a seal built into them. And I think these things were like 14 bucks a piece. So we're gonna get four new ones of these just so that we can get that new seal. And each of them have this little A metal bracket 
that uh, bolts on as well. And that is just usually where the uh, wiring harness gets clipped onto at various places. Here are some of those new seals that are gonna go around these. So that's pretty much all the parts we're gonna need for this section. All right, so this little tool here that we haven't talked about is uh, what we're gonna be using during this operation. You can see that the essentially ends of these bolts are going into the ends of our cams. And that's gonna help hold them down so that we can remove this bridge up here and they'll still be held down from back here with the, just a bolt that goes through here. This differs from the other tool we used because it does not lock them, they're allowed to rotate and it stays out of the way for when we put the cam cover on. So we can put the cam cover on with this in here and we'll still be able to turn the cams with this in here, it won't prevent that. All right, so with them being held down from the back, we can go ahead and remove the bridge. We do not need this support anymore. Obviously, this is gonna have to come off to get the cam cover on. Again, don't oh, drop do the bolts into engines. Need a hose? Two hands? Ooh, that's a long one. All right. All right, so we're taking our green seals. Don't forget these, or you're gonna get some oil leaks. Super duper important. All right, and then we can lubricate our uh, where the journals go on top of our cam here, 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 and here. Talk, talk to me. Here. Yep, that guy. This guy. This guy. And that guy. All right. Then we're gonna. Yep. So we can uh, lube these three journals on the back here. All right, so we're going to be putting the sealant on here soon. Uh, it's very important not to get sealant in this here. I hear that if the green caps are popping off, that's because you have that passageway clogged probably. The pressure buildup fires them out. So we're going to make sure that all of this is super clean. We're going to take some chem wipes and some cleaner to clean all of our surface really well. And the same with the mating surface here on the head. All right, we're reusing the bolts that uh, held the cam cover on. You need 20 for each bank. So we just clean these up. And uh, since these were micro encapsulated with that, we are gonna put a little bit of Loctite blue on the threads instead of replacing these. So if you do reuse them, they recommend you put some of that on there. All right, so we're gonna use our lube on here. Our sealant, probably. Yes, yeah, sealant. Sealant is better. And we're gonna go all the way around all of these. Can't and do it uh, I guess you wanna go a little bit heavier on what's gonna be the bottom where this- uh, So what would be the bottom? Right down here, this guy is gonna be the bottom. Um, because gravity is going to pull all of the oil down here and it's going to be pooling down here when the car is not running. So you can go a little bit thinner up top. So we're just going to go around all of these and we'll pat it down a little bit um, after it's all on to smooth it out. And an important note, that little groove right there that we just went past is like a little area for um what's the what's the word not ventilation but uh it's a passageway right yeah, it's like a little passageway that you make sure you do not get any sealant into because if you do it will cause extra pressure and pop out those green plugs that are going to go right back there so uh, be very careful around those areas there's one at the bottom and then another one up at the top. Right there. So this is the top where you can be uh, a little lighter if you want. Fix that later. Doing a great job here. Go 
back to the middle where the journals are and go around areas here where the bolts will be passing through. Pet that down. All right, I think that's it. Now we're just gonna pat it down and kind of uh, draw it out towards the edge. And of course our clock has now started as to how long this stuff will uh, not harden up and cure. So we wanna, we got enough time, but you can't just leave now and go have dinner. Here's where you want to draw it away from those grooves. If you do get any in there, scrape it out. And I know we put some oil in there. We're going to probably do it afterwards. We're probably going to do that for the... A little thin one, it looks still looks heavy. <laughs> All right, quick review. What do you think? It's good, except for the places you haven't done it yet. Middle. Oh. Down here at the end. All right, we're gonna drop the cam cover on. So again, you just wanna make sure your green seals are seated nicely when you do this. And after the cam cover goes on, you can make sure that they were not disrupted or pinched or anything. Set it on here gently, look through at our little green guys. Make sure that they are nice. Everything looks good. Looks good. All right, tap it down and start. Any, any interference? Start dropping some fasteners in here. Laser. All right, micro encapsulated now. All right, so we have them all in here. We're just going to. Uh, and tighten them all first. All right, so after all of these are hand tight, we're gonna go ahead in a specific sequence and torque them down. So it's kind of, uh, we're getting the journals where the journals are for the cams, like right there and then right here, and then right there, and then right here. So those are gonna be our first ones, and then we'll kind of crank down the rest of the case. All right, so these are going to be 13 newton meters, and we're gonna start with that guy right there. And the good old witness mark, and this one. Big ass dragonfly or something. Mm. All right. And next mm -hmm. to it. All right, here's a good view of our cam holding tool. You can see how it is out of the way of the cam cover. just realized what we should do is that or what I should do is I should mark all of the witness marks in exactly the same direction so that if one of these ever loosens up well no it's, it's like the roller coaster All right.
right, from here, it's eight. Nine. Nine, nine? You sure? Seems like that'd be nine. Okay, your One. call. Nine. Ten. This guy? Looks like we're tightening all the ones at the bottom of the case first. Twelve back over here. Thirteen in the corner. Fourteen back over here. Fifteen back over here. All right, now sixteen, we're coming to the up it's here seventeen eighteen All right, we're gonna work our way around nineteen and twenty. All right, now that all of that is fitted, we are going to make sure that the engine still rotates again. So that's the purpose of this tool here. It's still gonna allow the cams to rotate. We're gonna pull our pin out. We no longer care what position the engine is gonna be in. So we can leave that pin out for the rest of the time. And as long as we only turn this clockwise, we should be good. Feel how the engine turns. Normal. Normal. Normal-ish is good. So, yeah, it should be the hardest it's been, again, to turn the engine. So a little bit of the sealant squeezed out uh, from here and here, so I just wiped that out. And to be extra anal, we check the ends of the cam lobes and uh, just clean up any sealant that's squeezed out there. All right, the next step is to take these two green caps and we are putting them at the end of the camshaft here. And they just press in, push them in until they're flush. Pretty easy to put in, no extra sealant or anything required. Yes, right there, that's exactly <laughs> where that goes. Big brown one goes here. Do you have to put in grease or anything? No. Nope. Oh, ho, ho. look at that. Good and tight. Mm -hmm. That looks nice. It's professional. Beautiful. All right, we got this little filtery doodad, a little screen. We're just going to lube the uh, black rubber seal at the top. And it goes on bank one. It's the one closest to the flywheel side right in there. We're just going to drop it in and then kind of push it down so it's seated down there. Oh yeah, pretty tight down there. Push it. All right, so if we look down in here, you can see this pin right here where the arrow is, uh, and that helps you index this thing. Um, there's a little groove in it that lines up with that. So we lubricated the uh, O-ring on it 
and we're gonna line it up to go there with the pin. So it should push in nice and firm with that O-ring to seal nicely. And uh, your connector is going to run along with the rest of your spark plugs when it's aligned right. And then this piece right here, it's kind of got a groove here on the bottom. It's flat on Ooh, the we gotta top. got to lubricate it. Hold, hold, lubricate. Don't forget your lube. Mm -hmm. The part that's not um, open... I'm probably going to replace this, but the open part goes to the bottom. Yeah, this is our original one. Seal still seems pretty tight, but mm -hmm. better safe than sorry. We're going to order a new one and swap it out later. But for the video, we're going to go ahead and use it and install it. And hopefully you haven't lost this little piece. It goes over the top and it's a little clip for a piece of your wiring harness. So we're going to attach these screws, still carefully avoiding dropping things okay, stop. into the engine. Nope, this can't be this way. Stop. All right. So if you use the correct one, it will make a lot more sense and uh, look more like this. So I think we had the bracket for the other one. So, uh, yeah, we'll try that. All right, these guys are 10 Newton meters. Did you do both of them? Mm-hmm. Here, I'll, I'll prove it to you. All right, fine. All right, so our second solenoid, we're gonna loop him up a little bit. He is gonna drop down into here, and he does not have any indexes. There's a hole down there. What's the bottom of that thing look like? Just show the people at home. It's just like a weird nub. Mm -hmm. So he goes there down. There's a click. And I would align it the same as this. There's a nub, nub. The reason for that is, and we're gonna move this. reason for that alignment is this particular tool, it only goes in one way, it can't go in like this, it has a little holder. So by the time you put all this force in there. here to align the electrical connection up. I have one of the bolts. Oh, good, because I only have one. <laughs> Again, no dropping bolts down there. We cover that all up just in case. And these are, what are these? Like a five, five millimeter, millimeter Allen, as will be shown in the really cool graphic. Because <laughs> you have that capability. And these are gonna be like the other ones. 10 meters. I just witness marked myself. <laughs> I'm a witness to my witness mark. <laughs> for it. This just in, looking through a box of random new parts. <laughs> we found these. We had ordered them already, so uh, we're going to swap them out right now. Perfect. All right, these are our old used spark plugs. Again, oops. I haven't ordered new ones yet. It's only been a year. You'd think we could order yeah. some of these things, but we're gonna put these in now just so that stuff does not fall into our engine later on and swap them out with new ones when they come in. All right, so we're gonna put three spark plugs in, torque them down to the spec of whatever spark plug manufacturer says. We're gonna come back and take them out later anyway. Next up, we're gonna take the scavenge oil pump and install it right here in our final slot. Uh, so this part 
gets rotated around and pumps oil through here through these channels because this piece is slotted into the end of the cam here so when the cam rotates this rotates pumps oil um, these are made to go on either bank uh, if you look right here you can see one through three and if you look up there it's four through six so you have to orient this thing the right way. So based on how you orient it, it could go on either bank. So we're on bank one, which is cylinders one through three. So we have to take the one through three and face them towards the crank. So for us, it's gonna go on like that. If this were going down on bank two, the four through six would be facing towards the crank um, <clears throat> over on the other side of the engine over there. So for us, one through three, it has a big O-ring that goes here that we bought a brand new one of. So we're gonna put that in there. We are gonna make sure we lube it up and that it stays in place. We're going to try to orient this with the slot uh, in the crank and then we're gonna put it in, rubber mallet it in, make sure that this stays in place and then uh, attach it with four bolts. So let's lube. So we're just gonna make sure we get that lubed up. Now for our car, some of them have this extra weird looking thing on it. Uh, I think it's for like the brake booster or something. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. This one is super hard to turn. Nasty oil comes out when we do it. We tried to clean it, spray it out, but it's still really hard to rotate. So I think we're going to have to replace the one for bank two. Um, but it does have bolts that we can take it apart even further. So we're going to go ahead and do that just to see what the heck is inside this thing. But first, we're going to do bank one. We got to line that thing up so it fits in the slotty. And I do want to put a little bit of lube on that as well. Try to line it up with the slot. But I can take a couple tries, a little patience. go right. <laughs> Wouldn't go all the way in if it wasn't in the slot. There's no way, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll take it back out. All right. No, no. I, I, I wanted to do partially. <clears throat> yeah. Our ring is still lined up. There's no way that would go in otherwise. Yeah. And I just want to check the ring, actually. Yep. The ring still looks good. That's just went in too easy. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, um, there's just no other way. It's in the center. It's in the center. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we got these old bolts that we are reusing. They are T30s. Just hang and tighten all these guys first. All right. These are all 10 Newton meters. All right, there we go. Bank one is done. We can flip this bad boy over, do the exact same thing on bank two. Extra bonus content. Let's see what's inside this thing. Oh gosh. All right. So this goes around and it was, um, look how it was. Oh, really score on that thing. Yeah, kind of weird. This comes out on the other side. So you just have these pieces here. This goes back and forth. 
since it's eccentric, right? The as this goes around. So that is easy. And then so that outside part is just pushing air into the brake boost. Yeah, I think I think that's just a it's a vacuum actually. Oh. So this has a name I don't I don't know what the name of this pump is but so this pump goes wrong with that and it moves the fluid around oh. interesting yep yeah. that's all it is so there's not a lot of parts to this no other than the seals so the key part in putting this back, so yeah, this is all metal on metal. It sucks up the um, oil through one of these. Mm -hmm. Pushes it out the other one. Yeah. And there's only one way this goes. Like if you try to do it the other way, it doesn't work. Like, yeah, see the holes don't align. There's only one way of building this. Let's put that and pro tip here. And this will need probably Loctite Red, but put this in, but don't tighten it, because if you do, the smallest misalignment will make it so that that other shaft doesn't attach. Oh yeah, it it will be it'll be super super tight. So you want this to be sort of have some movement. This goes in there. All right, so that's going to go as so. We have this. And these are sort of the uh, on a on a rotary engine. These would be the rotor edges. Then this only goes in one direction. There. It's two bolts. So my concern is that ring. So is um, there any oil in that part when you hmm? took it out? Yeah, it was all terrible. I mean, I'll put some oil in here just in case. But... Yes. Yeah, see, it's supposed to have like a little bit of lube, even though it's pushing air. Yeah. Screw it. I don't know. I don't know if it'll work. I don't know if we're going to get another one. And somewhere there's another bolt. <laughs> All right. It is the next weekend for us. And I uh, just got back from my place. Thank you, Vapor Hunting Technologies. Another shout out to you guys. We've got a brand new looking part now. After using what I think is the most affordable uh, Vapor Hunter for home enthusiasts like myself shameless plug yes <laughs> all right so we we're just going to put this together um relatively dry very light i mean we're putting a light coat i'm not exactly sure if we should put a coat at all but it's a very light coat little oil not much and these parts pretty lubed anyway i guess we don't have any torque specs for this stuff right no we do not um and uh what i do know is when i took it out it was pretty hard so uh it had some loctite on them so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, put some loctite on it red or blue where's the other bolt you don't need all of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah on average, we just need to get the majority of them in. All right, that sealed it nicely. Oh, and uh, a pro tip, don't tighten anything up on this side 
until you have this in, otherwise it won't move nicely. Yes. So. Are we going blue or red blue. Loctite on this? Uh, blue. Blue. So. All right, blue Loctite, and those are T27s. Mm -hmm. Graphic provided by Conrad. I mean, buddy. <laughs> That's right, I'm going to keep myself anonymous. All this fame and fortune. <laughs> I'm really Adrian Newey. <laughs> All right, little O-ring lube. And which way does it go? It, uh, yeah, the other side had the one through four and one through three labeled on it. This one does not. Um, oh, you know what we forgot? Our screen. I put a little screen in there. All right, if you forget the screen, you have to open it back up. As such. Not this. Okay, little screen. It's got a little slot built in for the screen, so you'll know that it's on the right side. Awesome. I wondered how that didn't uh, come out and move around. Now we know. Now we know. Play. All right, so we got a brand new O-ring. As expected, a little tighter than the old one. All right, we're gonna have <laughs> to put some, a dab of... Uh... So we're just gonna take a little touch of our sealant and apply a couple dabs of it around for this O-ring. Ideally four go. in a star pattern. A square pattern, it's only four. What's well, a four star? Circular square pattern. Circular square star pattern. We don't know our shapes. Yes. We skipped kindergarten. <laughs> Lock that guy into place so he won't pop out during installation. Don't pop. All right. So this is on the top. So that you want to get that aligned. That is pointing to slightly to the left of that. Let's see if this works. Okay, that just, that's too easy. <laughs> she said on the last one. <laughs> that should be. I'm always concerned. Uh, all right, that was too easy. All right, so this oh, is the know. orientation that it should be in. All right, tilt you so that you are like this. So yeah, up and to the right, if you're looking at it from this angle for bank two. We have our four bolts that we will start by hand. And Ten they newton are meters. Are yeah. the thirties? Twenty fives. Twenty fives. Yes, the only time I labeled anything. <laughs> so T twenty five. All right. Seriously, that was too easy. Putting that in. Remember, the other side took us like. Yeah, you've done it once now. You have passed. <laughs> Look what we didn't do. Mm -hmm. These two bolts go on there on this hose. All right. Film on the mistakes and everything else. So, do you want us? Walk us through how you screwed up, Aaron, or should I? <laughs> why don't you, why don't you tell what, I, what I did wrong here? <laughs> right, so this hose, we're like, oh, that's an interesting hose. It has this bracket attached to it. And it goes right there. Hopefully I won't break anything. That goes there. It sure seems like they line up right there. Yep. So, Aaron should have seen that on the video. <laughs> I mean, on the... Um, 
But then you're going to run into the problem, right? Uh -huh. So if these bolts the, are in the correct place. So you got the blue Loctite on these as well? Yeah, why not? No harm. This is aluminum, so make sure you start them proper. Witness marks that I'm about to make. <laughs> as I said, T30, as it's clearly marked. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. these yes. are T30s. Yes. T30s. T30s. All right, torque all of these down to 10 Newton meters. And mark. Or eye candy in the background while you're doing that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Wish this was clean. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> so, is that it for our engine? Uh, is it done? Is uh, it built? No. No, yeah, no, let's, hold on. Let's fire it up. All Where right. The keys? <laughs> All right. Well, I think that is it for this video. We're going to come back and we're going to do the rear main seal next. So stay tuned for that. Give this a video a thumbs up. If you have not, subscribe. Obviously, you should be subscribed. And we'll see you on the next video.